2022 paper one exam. It was today, for, for me, I've managed to get a hold of the paper. I'm going to do paper one today and hopefully I'll get a chance to upload paper two tomorrow. I'm going to go through the whole solutions in this video. Hopefully don't watch this if it's going to stress you out if you've got other exams, but hopefully this helps some people or those who are going to do revision for future exams. Question one says evaluate two thirds, bracket one fifth plus three quarters. So the first thing I'm going to try and do is add the fractions inside the brackets. So I've got a fifth plus three quarters. Common denominator, I'll just times them together to get 20. One times four is four plus three fives is 15. That gives me 19 out of 20. So I've now got two thirds times 19 out of 20. Well, I might as well simplify in advance. So divide by two to get one, divide by two to get 10. So we get our final answer of 19 over 30. And we're done, can't simplify that any further. Question two says, given that f of x is x cubed minus two, evaluate f of minus three. So I need to substitute minus three in for x. So we've got minus three cubed, take away two. Well, minus three cubed is minus 27. So that's minus 27, take away two, which is minus 29. I would say you're getting a mark there for substituting the minus three, and then a mark for working it out and getting your final answer. Okay, the diagram below shows a cone with a diameter of 20 centimetres and a height of 60 centimetres. Calculate the volume of the cone. This is where you should have went back to the start of the exam paper and says, ah, volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. So I'm going to use that. So we've got volume is one third pi r squared h. Well, that's my h. And r, well, it's going to be half of 20, so it's 10. So let's just zoom in a little bit. That's one third times 3.14 times 10 squared times 60. So that is one third times 3.14 times 100 times 60. Now everything's times, so you can do it in any order. So my, the most logical step at this stage is to divide the 60 by three to get 20. So you get 3.14 times 100 times 20. That's 314 times 20. So my final answer, put a zero on, times by two, that gives me eight, two ones are two, two threes are six, and I need some units, so it's centimetres cubed for volume. And there you go. Okay, question four, the diagram with so the circle was sent O, had to redraw the diagram because it wasn't showing up so well, but it is exactly the same diagram. So it says AB is the tangent, that's point C, CD is the diameter, EOD is 6 to 8 degrees, calculate ACE. So it's asking us to calculate from here to here to here, all this bit here. So I need to start off just by trying to calculate angles. So let's start, we've got a radius here and a radius here, so I can do 180 minus 68. That gives me 112, and since that's an isosceles triangle, 112 divided by 2 is 56 degrees. So I've got 56 here and 56 here. Now I might not need these angles, but I'm just calculating everything anyway. And then we can see that angles on a straight line add up to 180. So I've got two 56s, so that gives me 112 again. 112 plus 68 is 180 degrees. We've got another isosceles triangle on this side. So we can do 180 minus 112, but we know that's 68. So 68 divided by 2 is 34 degrees. Last little bit. If we have a tangent meeting a radius, it meets it at right angles. So that is 90 degrees. So our full angle that is what we need, ACE is from here all the way to here. That is 90 plus 34, which is 124 degrees. So just to answer the question, angle ACE is 124 degrees. And we're done. 
Question 5 says express uh, x squared plus 8x plus 15 in the form x plus a squared plus b. This is called completing the square. A half the middle number. Immediately take it away. I've still got plus 15 on the end. So I've got x plus 4 squared minus 16 plus 15. So I've got x plus 4 all squared minus 16 add 15 is minus 1. Hence the otherwise state the coordinates of the turning point of the graph. Well, completely square form tells you the turning point, it is 4, but then it's the opposite, so it's minus 4, and then minus 1. So we've got minus 4, minus 1. Job done. Find the equation of a line passing through those points and give it in simplest form. So we need the gradient first. So gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's x1, y1. That's x2, y2. So that gives me 7 minus minus 1 on the top. And minus 5 minus minus 3. That gives me 8. Minus 5 add 3 is minus 2. That gives me minus 4. Now we use y minus b equals mx minus a. Or y equals mx plus c. So I'm going to t just pick a point for a and b, I'll just pick the second one, a and b, y minus 7 is minus 4, x minus minus 5. Watch out for minus minuses. y minus 7 is minus 4, x plus 5. y minus 7 is minus 4, x minus 20. So y equals minus 4, x. Minus 20 plus 7 is minus 13. And we're done. Let's give it a go, shall we? So we've got a fraction first. So the first thing I'm going to do is times both sides by the fraction. So let's just write it out again. So I'm going to times this side. I'll just do it in a different colour, just so it's very clear. Times by c squared. And times this side by c squared. So that gives us c squared d equals b plus 4. Now I need b on its own, so I'll take away 4. So I've got c squared d minus 4 equals b. And you can leave your answer like that. Or b equals c squared d take away 4. Okay, part of the graph of a sine bx is shown. What is a and b? Well, the amplitude, the height is 3 minus 3. So A is just 3. State the value of B. Well, it's not 1. There is only 1 shown, but it only goes up to 45. I need to go all the way to 360. So you're basically asking how many 360s are in 45? How many 45s are in 360s? Well, it's forty-five ninety. One eighty will be 4. So you've got 8. In other words, B equals 8. There will be 8 of those graphs up to 360. Question 9. The diagram shows a triangle ABC. Calculate the value of cos B. Cos B? Trig. Start the exam paper. Let's go. All the way back. It says the cosine rule. Cos A is B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. Let me just write that down and copy it down for this question. So we're way down at question 9. So usually the cosine rule So usually the cosine rule is written as cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. And it wants me to work at the value of cos B which is here. So I'm just going to call that A just to make that the one I want. And that means the opposite side is A, and the other two sides are, and the other two sides are B and C. It doesn't matter which is which, so I'll just call that B and that C, and just substitute. So as I make my angle A, I'm fine. So we've got cos A equals seven squared plus three squared minus five squared over.
2 times 7 times 3, 49 plus 9 minus 25, 2 7s is 14, 3 14s, 28, 38, 42. So that gives me 49 plus 9, which is 58, minus 20, which is 38, minus 5, which is 33, over 42. Is that simplified? Well, numbers that go into both of them, I can divide by 3 to get 11 over 14. Now, we've written cos A, remember, but that's actually cos B. So, our final answer to be very clear for the examiner, cos B is 11 over 14. That's my answer. I want to change it to cos A and change the letters to make it make more sense to me because we're using cos A as the formula. Question 10. Tommy buys flower seeds from a website. He's given a 30% discount. He pays £16.10. Calculate the cost without the discount. No time in this question, so I'm probably dividing. So 30% discount, which means 100% minus 30%. That means he's paid 70%. So we know that 70% represents £16.10. We could go down to 10% and back up to 100% hopefully. So let's just go down to 10%, divide by 7 to give me 10%, divide by 7. So that gives me 7 twos are 14, 2 left over, 7 threes are 21, and 0 is £2.30 for 10%. So 100% must be £23. Question 11. Simplify m to the minus 2 to the power 4 times m to the minus 5. Give your answer with a positive power. Watch out. Final bit. So you've got m to the minus 2 times 4. That's m to the minus 8 times m to the minus 5. So add the powers. Minus 8 plus minus 5 is minus 13. And I'm almost done. That's 1 over m to the 13, using the fractional rule for negative indices. Question 12. Express that as a single fraction in its simplest form. Algebraic fractions. x plus 2, x plus 2 squared. So x plus 2, x plus, then it's a divide. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that divide. So we've got 4 over x plus 2. Divide means we change to our times and we flip the second one upside down. And now we can simplify and advance as normal. So we've got x plus 2 and x plus 2 on top and bottom. So I can take one of them away, take one of them away, and that just leaves x plus 2. And then we can answer the question. You've got 4 times x plus 2 over 5. And we're done. No need to expand the bracket because it's already simplified. It doesn't make it any simpler. Expand and simplify. So we've got root 10 times root 10. Well, that's just 10. We've got root 10 times root 2. Well, that's going to be root 20. 2 tens are 20. And we've still got plus 8 root 5. So at this point, we need to check if root 20 can be simplified as a third. We're looking for two numbers that go into 20. One's a square number. Hopefully it'll be 5. Let's just check. Root 20 equals root root. Well, 4 is a square number times 5, so that gives me 2 for square root and 4, root 5. So I can rewrite my problem as 10 minus 2 root 5 plus 8 root 5, which equals 10. 8 minus 2 is 6, so plus 6 root 5. And we're done. Can't add the 10 and the 6 root 5 because, well, Different from each other. One's a, one's a whole number, one's got a root in it. Question 13 says, sketch a graph of y equals x plus 1x minus 3 using the axes provided below. And on our sketch, we need to show the points of intersection with the x-axis and y-axis and the turning points. So notice this is already factorised. So our roots are given straight away x plus 1. So we've got x equals minus 1. And x minus 3, so we've got x equals positive 3. So we can immediately put that on, minus 1, and I'll make my 3 sit here. 
where it cuts the y-axis. So for the y-axis, we need to make, remember, x equal to 0. So we've got 0 plus 1, which is 1. I'll write it out actually. And 0 minus 3. So that's 1 times minus 3, which is minus 3. So again, on my y-axis, I can go down and say minus 3. I now just need my turning point. So my turning point is in the middle of the roots. So middle of minus 1 plus 3 is this sort of add them and divide by 2. 3 minus 1 is 2 over 2. It happens at x equal to 1. So at x equal to 1, y equals, substitute it back into our equation, 1 plus 1, 1 minus 3. That equals 2 times minus 2 which is minus 4. So our point is 1 minus 4. So we can note that. Let's go along to 1. Let's note minus 4. So it's about here. Make a nice neat sketch. Remember it's going to be a parabola. So we go down here, through our axis, round and back up. And that will do. And I'll just to be on the safe side, I'll note that that point is 1 minus 4. And we're done. Question 15 says a triangle rectangle shown in the diagram and it says find the expression for the area of a triangle as a half the base times the height. So I just need to write down a half times 3 times x plus 12. A half times 3 is 3 over 2, so it's 3 over 2 x plus 12, just like that. But B says given the area of a triangle is equal to the area of a rectangle, find the algebraic root value of x. So let's have a look at the rectangle base times height, so that's 6 bracket 8 minus x, so let's just write that down, 6 bracket 8 minus x, and of course, I'll just move that across a little bit, the triangle equals that, so the triangle remember was 3 over 2x plus 12. So we've set up an algebraic equation that we can solve. So let's just get rid of the fractions to start with. Times on each side by 2. So we've got 3 times x plus 12 equals 6 times 2 is 12, 8 minus x. Right, expand our bracket, we get 3x plus 36 equals 96 minus 12x. Collecting the x's on one side, adding 12x to both sides gives us 15x plus 36 equals 96. Take away 36 from both sides, we get 15x equals just 60. So x is 60 over 15, which means that x equals 4. And there we are, we've got four for X. And that's the end of the National 5 2022 exam paper one. Hopefully you found this useful and helpful. Check back next time for paper two. Take care, stay safe and goodbye.